What's going on guys, it's Nick Roy from NWB. Now, when it comes to building big arms, my arms are actually not my genetic strong point. I had to work really hard on building up a lot of trial and error. I had a decent genetic structure to it, as in I had a peak, but I had no size. One of the biggest things that helped build my arms up was actually a twist to the hammer curls. See, normal hammer curls, you grip the dumbbell like so, you come straight up. It's gonna work your bicep, but it works a lot of your forearms. What I actually do is I grab the dumbbell, holding it the same way, I instead bring it up towards my opposite chest. So if it's my right arm, bring it up towards my left pectoral, across my body, instead of out in front of me. This means you do have to put your elbow out in front of you a little bit, pivot your arm, and then curl like so. This is actually gonna put a lot more emphasis on building up your brachialis. Now my arms are full of blood from a full arm workout right now, so I really don't have any too much definition to show you. But when I do cut back down, the brachialis is that small little round muscle in between the bicep and the tricep. And this will add a lot of detail and a lot of size to your arms. The other thing I do that's different is I like isolation for all my arm movements. I go heavy, but I believe in strict solid form for the most part. These, I will go very low reps, and I actually incorporate some power movement into them. Now, I don't throw them or heave them, but you'll see it almost turns into more of a brute force workout with uh, as low as six reps per set. This really, really bangs out the deep, thick fibers of the arm. And since it's the only exercise I use this power motion for, it's not gonna affect my arm training at all. It just helps top it off with that extra thickness. So check these out. I'm gonna start off with 50 pound dumbbells. This is the very last workout of my bicep workout. I'm 166 pounds right now, about 10 weeks out from my show. So I'm very slight lean forward just so I can get more range of motion. My form is very strict. And no matter how many reps I do, you'll only see me focus on a squeeze and a slow negative. And I'm always gonna keep my arm pinned in this one position. I'm not letting it come out as I go. I'm not bringing it forward as I come up. My upper arm stays straight, almost like a crane. So that's one down. All right, second set, I'm jump right up to 70s. It's gonna be heavier, less reps. But again, just focus on that squeeze. And even if you can't see it so much, I'm keeping the contract and contraction all the way down, slow, controlled, negative. Again, you don't want to use this method for all your arm workouts, but this is a good finisher, and it really, really has given me amazing results. Getting there, working up the ladder. All right, guys, so we're getting up there towards the last set. And like I said, the key here is building the deep, thick fibers, almost more of a brute force movement. So the form's not gonna be traditional, it's not gonna be textbook. And like I said, if you use this for every form, you're gonna be playing yourself. But keeping my back straight, I'm not swinging or jerking. You may see my arm come a little bit out from my side, that's fine, it's gonna be almost the same principle as doing uh, the incline curls on the incline bench. It's that good stretch right there. But with the amount of weight you're doing at this point, the range of motion isn't as significant. As long as you're keeping your form safe and you're getting a good contraction and a great negative, this is a good power movement and build up those deep, thick fibers. Do 85s. And I am using straps right now because my forearms will start fatiguing before my arms do. And I just want to give it all to my biceps right now. Whew. Grip side slipping on that last one. <laughs> what an incredible, just squeezing it. Excellent contraction and stretch in the negative.